Hey everyone, here is some footage of the latest Voxtopolis build. There are now two selectable characters. You can drag them around, they will follow your mouse. Before playing, you can create a world, give it a name and a seed. After a small loading screen, with hopefully no frame drops. We now spawn in our world. You can break things to collect them. All the world rendering is done with custom ray tracing shaders in Unity. Anything you see in the distance, you can go to and explore. Let's now switch to edit mode and break some voxels. Everything you see is destructible. Voxels that are solid can be picked up. Voxels without collision, they just fall to the ground. While exploring, the player's character will keep being rendered, but just for the shadows. The shadows are ray traced as well, but directly to a shadow map. The ambient occlusion is done with post-processing. I for now added a simple spherical brush and some different materials to pick from. I've now added some detailed textures to certain voxels. And added rim lighting and reflections to materials like metal. Now let's take a look at some debugging tools. To keep the frame rate fast, I only calculate the collisions in a small area around entities. These are being recalculated right before every physics update. The system stays fast even with multiple entities. If we zoom out, you can see that the collision keeps being calculated even at the lower LODs. Entities respond to collision updates pretty aggressively. Now let's take a look at the system that makes rendering this many voxels possible. Here is a debug view of the ray tracing. The brighter the pixels, the more steps a ray is taking. This is using a sparse octree data structure. You can see that everything is tightly capsulated by cubes. Here is the ray tracing output to the depth buffer. This is used for post processing. The reflections that you see in the water are the result of a simple compute shader that renders to a low resolution buffer. The waves of the water distort this enough so it's not noticeable.
Now let's take a look at the LOD system. For that let's place a few voxels. Just something that will be visible in the distance. To keep memory usage low and safe on performance, lower resolution chunks are being generated the further away they are from the camera. If we fully unload the chunks, and move close again, you can see that they are reloaded from disk. All changes that the player makes are being serialized to the world folder. This is using deflate compression. All changes in this video made the world folder around 900 kilobytes. Let's now take a look at the sunset. The game has a full day and night cycle. The moon will show up and stars will be visible at night. There is no limit in how far away something needs to be for it to cast a shadow. Mountains in the distance will cast shadows as well. Now let's do some fast flying around to show off the world generation. The world seed is used for terrain generation and biomes. World generation is deterministic, so two worlds with the same seed will look exactly identical. Terrain generation continues underwater, where in very deep water you can find large stones and some plants in shallower water. And I think that sums it up. If you want to play this and try it for yourself, you can join the Discord where you can download the latest build. The link will be in the description. I hope to be giving more frequent updates when I start working on enemies and other characters to make the world feel more alive. Subscribe to get the latest updates, and of course, join the Discord, where you can play the game for yourself. <laughs>